Next week, we head to Auto Club Speedway in Fontana, California. Jeff Gordon leads all drivers with three Auto Club Speedway wins. The NASCAR Sprint Cup Series Pepsi 500 at California on ESPN next Sunday, August 31st. Coverage begins with NASCAR Countdown at 7 o'clock Eastern Time. Jeff Gordon trying to continue his uh, good runs at California, trying to get himself uh, solidly back in the chase tonight. Maybe have a shot at winning. He is holding on to third spot behind the 18 car and the 99 of Carl Edwards. We asked Jeff Gordon, entering Bristol tonight, what's the focus now as the chase approaches? We're focused on just trying to win races. Um, we do that pretty much from the beginning of the season to the end of the season, but I will say that as the race progresses, you definitely have to know where you're at, where you stand, who you're racing in the chase. All about the big picture, DJ. You've been there many, many times, and no one understands that more than the guy that's uh, been in that championship table four times. Yeah, he knows how to win championships, obviously, and, and this is a position that he doesn't want to be in. He knows that he wants to go try to win races, and that's their easiest way of getting in, but you're not going to have that car every time, and so then you make the most of it, and, and you need a driver like Jeff Gordon who understands the big picture and can take all of that in in a race while he's doing his job driving the car. He knows his surroundings and who he's racing. Mike? And, and Doc, joining in that conversation, I had a, a conversation myself with Steve Latart this afternoon. He said these next three races, all about one thing, qualifying for the chase. He said this year has really left them scratching their head. He said despite the fact that they scored 30 top tens a year ago, had six victories, they've worked twice as hard this year. In fact, they went testing 22 times as opposed, opposed to just 10 times a year ago. They just could not figure out this car and are really just trying to make it to the next step and qualify for the chase. Andy, you talked to Steve Latard a bunch today, and I know these guys are focused. If they could get it in the chase, as Mike was saying, these guys believe they've got a legitimate shot. Oh, they're going to have a shot. I mean, he, this is a championship driver right here. Saw what he did last year. It's incredible what he did in the chase. But Steve, uh, Steve said that the problem is this car has really uh, is, is changed and thrown a curve to this Hendrick team. They used to run, be able to run close to the same setups when they could run uh, do th different things with the bodies because the car drivers like something different. But now he says that the, the 48 and 24 can't run anything close to the same setup. Kyle Busch still showing the way here. 91 laps to go. By the way, for you Casey Kane fans, uh, the news is not good. He is done for the night and he will record a 40th place finish. So uh, Jeff Burton in 42nd, Casey Kane in 40th. Uh, not a good uh, evening, two weekends in a row for Casey Kane. Well, what about there as a nine car and uh, just uh, not enough time to make the repairs to getting back on the racetrack. They're just going to try to fix it to be able to get it back in the hauler and head home. The big, th the big concern now, a lot of pit strategy being uh, discussed on pit road and guys in the pit studio, Rusty and Brad and Allen, uh, from your vantage point down there, what are you thinking uh, that these leaders might be thinking about? Well, here, here's what we've been talking about. We want to talk about it with you guys, too. The, the 18, the 99, Kyle Busch, Carl Edwards, two dominant drivers on the night, right? They stopped with just a little over 150 to go and did not stop under that last caution. Those other guys stopped a little while later at uh, three, what do I have here, 366. Now, they could maybe make it to the finish on fuel, but Andy and, and, and Rusty, Brad, and DJ, here's what I was thinking. Remember early in the race when we had the long green flag runs and you got to about 100 laps and somebody would wear that right front tire out from the brake heat? Yeah. I'm thinking that's probably why those guys didn't stop then, and if we get a caution now, they will. I think they absolutely have to. I mean, we were talking about 150 laps ago, and DJ had brought that point up as we were getting closer to that second 100 lap mark and said, let's see if these tires give way again and we have some right front tire failures. Well, we didn't quite get to that point. So now we're coming back up on that opportunity again. I don't know. It looks like everyone's cars, if they've got the cars figured out, they've settled down. Kyle Busch is stretching out a nice run. Carl Edwards running hard for about 10 laps there. He's falling back into place. I think we're in good shape to go the distance, but we'll have to see. Guys, I'd be very, very surprised if this racetrack goes green. I mean, <laughs> I mean I'm mean, i not Bristol. trying to jinx anybody whatsoever, but it's Bristol, man. And when the intensity starts building late in the race, things start happening. They start having crashes, stuff like that. And if that happens, and they come down pit road, get four tires on all these cars, Carl Edwards knows that he's got to strike then and he's got to get it 
done. And I think you're going to see this guy get real aggressive. Now, the other thing I'm seeing, this 07 car, Clint Boyer, and the 6 car, David Reagan, are within four points right now. And they're running ninth and tenth. So it's heating up for the points to get in the top 12 also. We're not the only ones thinking about fuel. Here's Carl Edwards Radio. Can we make it on fuel? That's four. Is it close? Yeah, it'll be close, but yeah, we can make it. Now we're three to the good. <laughs> three to the good, but uh, Mr. P3 up there, I know you got your calculator out. I know you've been watching this tire wear, but will the right front be good? Yeah, that's the, that's the thing, Alan. You know, these guys, I believe, can make it on fuel, but I'm like Rusty. I don't think there's any way this thing's going green to the end. <laughs> Wouldn't surprise us if it did, just because you always expect the unexpected at Bristol. Now, if it does go green, the, pump, the, the question is about the tires, about the right front tire. The eight car's in good position. He is the uh, top car among those that have pitted on lap 366. So fuel-wise, Andy, do you believe he'd be okay? Yeah, I think the fuel's fine. And the thing that you worry about on the right front tires is brake heat and melting that bead. And we saw a couple cars have problems with it already. And, uh, you know, we may or may not see that in this long run, but I just don't see how they can run 150 laps uh, without having some kind of an issue that brings out a caution. We see Denny Hamlin here. He just passed Jeff Gordon to take over the third spot. So his car looks like it's really good in these longer runs. Hamlin uh, trying to get a top five finish, now being shown 11th in the overall points, solidly in the chase. Let's go, let's go. 